A quick word on Canelo. I saw your tweet. Canelo isn't fighting September. Mm. There is no Callum Plant fight. There is no Dimitri Bivol fight. What's the latest on Canelo? Yeah, we were uh, got to a point where it was six weeks today. Mm. And of course, we know there were some negotiations with Caleb Plant that fell through. We started to look at Dimitri Bivol and you know, I was kind of like trying to nudge and nudge, but Eddie Reynoso sort of turned around last night and said, look, let's wait. We're only going to box once this year. Yeah. It's six weeks on Saturday. Mm. It's difficult with the promotion. It's difficult with the sparring. Let's just delay that till late October, early November. They do want to fight Caleb Plant. I mean, mm. that, that is what they want at the end of the day. Yeah. Dimitri Bivo is there. Uh, he accepted the fight. He's ready to fight. But the ultimate goal for Canelo is to be undisputed at 168 pounds. So they'll reignite that, you know, mm. see what Mr. Heyman says when they go back for, for seconds. Never and easy. No, never easy. And I saw Caleb Plant with some, some words on social media this morning. So that sometimes makes it even more difficult. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we'll plan now for, like I said, probably early November and uh, he'll be back in the ring. But he's always ready. Like if him, not Caleb, yeah. um, is it Dimitri Bivol? Are there other names? I know Demetrius Andre must be ringing your phone down yeah. for the opportunity. There's Charlo there. Well, There's Demetrius others. is at 160 pounds, mm. you know, and, and one thing up. Canelo, yeah, but one thing Canelo likes to do mm. is face the champions. Yeah. And, you know, I think if he can't get Plant, he'll want to fight another champion. Mm. If there's no more in his division, he'll want to go up and fight Bivol. He loves the better beer fight as well. I mean, that is just the most brutal yeah, fight. Isn't it? I know, it's but, you know, I remember sitting down with him once, you know, and, and to be honest, like, when I first started the relationship, it was kind of like through Eddie Reynoso and, mm. you know, I'd sort of see Sal and say, yes, sir, thank you, sir, thank you. <laughs> and then I got to know him. And, you know, when we talk about fights now, you know, I say to him, oh, he says, what about light heavyweight? I said, yeah, we've got Dimitri Bivol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other guy. I'm like, better be Joe Smith. And he's like, <laughs> no, 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 the other one. I'm like, better be He's yeah. like, yeah, him. That's crazy. I'm like, That's what? crazy. Like, you know, so. Yeah. Look, he, he, he loves to take challenges and he loves mm. to take take great fights. Dimitri Bivo is a, is a all these guys at 175, they're all they're all tough in. The thing is with Dimitri Bivo is he's been talking about coming to 168 yeah. for a while now and mm. can do it. They wouldn't fight at 168, but they might fight at a catch weight, and mm. Dimitri would be more than happy to do that because he makes 175 so easily. So I think when you get to that stage in your career, what else is there to do? I mean, he just consistently fights, you know, the you, best. you look at his run. If Danny Jacobs, Sergei Kovalev, Callum Swift, and Billy Joe Saunders, that's four champions yeah. that he's faced in different that's weight classes. That's in what, classes. two and a half years yeah, as well? And run. particularly, you know, the Callum Swift fight was in December. Mm. You know, so really he's gone Callum Smith, you know, Yildrim was, it was an easy night, and then Billy Joe Saunders. But before that, the light heavyweight world champion in Kovalev, and before that, the middleweight champion in Danny Jacobs. So not bad, is it? You really, and you know what? You've got, you've got, yeah, you know what? I post, I post, the internet's just such a mad place, isn't it? I just posted last night, I said to Sal, I said, do you want me to put it out that you're not fine? Yes, please, you know. So I posted, and it's like, oh, he's ducking every, it's like, how can <laughs> you even all the people that aren't ducking. I, know, I, know, I think I Canelo is the one of those people. Let's yeah. talk about the main event tonight uh, very quickly. Jazza we Dickens should really have him on the show. I mean, I'll keep, you know, yeah. I'm very worried about his impartiality. Be, well, he's tried, but he's failed. He's failed. He's, he's, he's failed. He's, he's going to fail miserably yeah. all night. He's, he's tried. I mean, no. Yes, you are. Yeah, you no, will. Of course you are. What do you want me to say? My man can lose tonight. No, but that's not. Just without a shadow of doubt, he can lose. Look. There's no point trying to be impartial. I'm not. It's just impossible. I'm for you. saying what what can happen. It, he, my man yeah, can lose tonight. If I, he doesn't get that, it right, but you it's still a really can't be impartial. Fight. I'm impartial as to say that. What, what's going to happen when the bell goes? Really what's going to happen? You're going to scream and shout like no, you normally no. do. <laughs> you sure? No, I'm not. Do you want a bet? No, yes, no. I do actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Listen, it's a really good fight. It's intriguing, and I'm I'm excited for Jazza Dickens. I understand how much it means. It means it does. I mean, look, I know fun. you're in the, the Dickens camp, all jokes aside, but also Kid Galahad, there's not many people that dedicate his life no. more to the sport mm, than yeah. him as well. So this is it. This is the it's ultimate, cool. really. It's a great story with Jazza, you know, and, and I would love to see him win a world title. And Kid Galahad's put so much work in, I'd love to see him win a world title as well. I think we're going to get a great fight because you've got 36 minutes to change your life. Indeed. Like Indeed. I, we spoke to Jazza what, a couple of days ago, and I was saying that the featherweight division right now in this country is bubbling, right? We saw Lee Wood sure. last week, Josh Warrington, Lara coming up. Does the winner of this fight potentially get Lee Wood fight next? Yeah, I think there's so many fights, isn't there? I mean, you've got Lee Wood, you've got Jordan Gill floating yeah. around, would be a great uh, voluntary defence as well, very good fighter. Um, you've got Leo Santa Cruz, if you ever grace the size to go back down. Yeah. Again. Um, you've got That's Gary Russell, man. who's bo last boxed in 1942. Has he had his one yeah, fight for the year? No, he hasn't. He's not had it for the last three years. So, Lee Wood, what we saw with Lee Wood last week was a great example of someone 
to talk about changing their life. I know it's a bit cheesy, but this is a kid who, you know, he's, he's been, let's be honest, he's been on the bread line for years in the boxing game. Do you know what I mean? He's what? been having two fights a year to survive, selling tickets. Big you know, thing we've seen, though, Ed, last week was that inactivity kills fighters. Yeah. I'm, I'm not harping on Here you go again. Here goes, Lee, Wood. Know, Adam, Lee, Lee Wood, Wood is the one. Take. Lee Wood is the one. Who I guess he's been inactive. Kid got no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Inactivity is the killer of all yeah, fighters yeah. because Zukan, although Lee Wood didn't give him the opportunity to show what he is, he wasn't himself. Ed. Question for you though, Josh Warrington. Yes. Who I think inactivity really affected him in the Lara yes. fight. But despite the fact that you know he, he lost him, what was it, eight, eight or nine rounds? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Do you call that activity? I mean, you know, when he goes back into the rematch, like. Would you have rather he didn't have that fight, or, or do you class that as rounds? Do you class that as activity? No, because he lost, and he, and, he, and he lost pretty well, do you know what I mean? He, he was losing most rounds, he was hurt all the time. <clears throat> I think the one thing that Josh Warrington can take from that last fight is the fact that he showed that he stands in there no matter what, and he stays in there, he wants to carry on fighting. That might not be a good idea. Yeah. No, it's Tell not. What, but, he was immensely brave in The that minerals, fight, I mean, mate, listen, not everyone's got them, Addy. No. I've seen it many a time, I've seen fighters, you know, just spew it at times. I've seen fighters want to grind it out. It shows he's a warrior and it shows that he's willing to go to any level to win. And I'm not being funny. If you want to get to the top level of the sport and remain there, you've got to have that. Do you know Good what? Just, just on. One, one thing on that. That was one of the most harrowing experiences oh, that I've ever seen that fight. Behind Sinless. closed doors, yeah. yeah. You could hear everything. Yeah. You know, you could hear the corner, you could talk, you could hear his dad talking to him, you could hear him telling Howard Foster, I'm okay, Howard, I'm let sorry. me carry on, I'm fine, you know, and it was, just, mate, it, that was a night I'll never forget, and let's, let's hope he can put it right ahead yeah, of me. 20,000, 20,000 Leeds fans, you know what Leeds fans are like as well, yeah. quick word on Conor Ben, obviously supposed to headline last week's event, me and you spoke up on the DAZN bus, and we said potentially he could go on that card as well, the Lara Warrington card, any any news on that? Yeah, I mean, to say he's chomping at the bit is an understatement. I see him tweet, he's, he's crushing he's it. He's back crushing he said he's crushing it. I had an argument with him yesterday, because he's like, right, I'm coming to the show Saturday. I said, how's your isolation? It finishes on Friday. And I'm like, and, and I'm going through the isolation. I said, I actually think it finishes at midnight on Saturday. Yeah. But he's like, yeah. he's just, he's just, he can't wait. You know, he just yeah. can't wait to get back in the gym. Mm. He actually wants the box next Saturday, but mm. it's just completely, it's unrealistic, you know what I mean? And, one thing he was worried about is how the COVID might affect him in the yeah. gym. He's been training non-stop at home. Mm. You know, he, he says he feels a, mi a million bucks. So, um, September 4th, yeah. I, think, I think stand by for an announcement on that. And, you know, it's going to just add to an incredible night headingly. Got the big press conference this Tuesday in Liverpool with Anthony Fowler and Good Liam luck on Smith. That one. Yeah, should, be, uh, be should be tasty. It's going to be yeah. a belter. Got some yeah. great car uh, fights to announce on that card as well. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to September 4th. It's going to be... You know, more problems uh, a couple of days ago when they put Mexico on the red list. Mm. So, you know, it affects some opponents for like, for next week, yeah. but also affects the likes of Strathon and Maurizio Lara, because yeah. they need to come 10 days before now and quarantine in the hotel, yeah. or That's go to right. a green list country and quarantine, or, or an amber list because of the exemption. So Strathon and Maurizio Lara will now fly to Spain, to Madrid, to finish their camp. Stay there probably two weeks now before the fight wow. to make sure that they can they can adapt and it's, it's forever changing. <clears throat> That's a problem. That's Big problem. problem.